just had uh, Ron Paul's brother, who's been fighting just as long as Ron Paul against the globalist. With Wayne, it's almost 50 years. And uh, Wayne, of course, was talking about his brother, if he just joined us uh, to finish up that story, who, who had a double knee replacement and two weeks after was carrying his own bags from the Houston airport and walking way out in the long-term parking himself. Anybody's ever had a knee replacement? I've talked to folks that have. You're supposed to walk on them after a while, to, but it's ex reportedly excruciatingly painful. That's an idea of the quiet strength of Ron Paul. And you heard in the history of the congressional baseball team, the only guy ever um, this year to knock a ball out of the park. I mean, just an example of Ron Paul. I respect people who can stay focused on the news, on legislation, do, do 10 or more interviews a day, not miss votes, uh, always know what he's talking about, do all these interviews. He's just incredible. And when you know about the rest of the congressmen are lazy, visiting hookers, drugs, corruption, golf junkets, and there's Ron Paul, same guy 35 years ago. He is today, been absolutely right about everything. Perfect voting record, true constitutionalist. And I just haven't been giving Ron Paul enough love on air. Uh, he is just so good, and, and he's the type of president America needs. At this critical juncture, God is providing him if we'll get behind him. And even if he loses, we win by injecting real issues. You're not going to get it from Rick Perry, Michelle Bachman, the IRS tax collector. I wish Rick Perry was real. I get behind him right now. But he is the former chief of staff in Texas in the, what, 1992 presidential run before Clinton beat him out of Al Gore. He worked for Al Gore. Uh, he is a guy that sold out our 8,000 miles of roads to foreign companies. He is a guy that tried to run a hoax saying he had to take force inoculations. And I told everybody that he was going to run for president because he went to Bilderberg and Jim Tucker had, has insiders, two of them. And, and Jim said he, they're getting him lined up for president, probably 2012. Boom. He comes out six months ago and says, I pledge to not run. Oh, I may break my pledge. We knew from Fox Insiders that was all staged. It's one thing if he breaks a pledge. That's bad enough. To know it was always fake, to act like he's this uh, uh, reluctant hero, it's pure script. Oh, but he goes to the evangelicals, the good Christians, and, and tells them how much he loves Jesus. Might as well just ask Al Gore to come out of retirement and put him on there. And I got all these Republicans sending me emails going, he may have been Al Gore's guy in the past, and he may have been for all this, but you need to leave him alone. He's going to beat Obama. What, do you want Obama? I heard the same thing with Clinton, you know, when he was leaving. What, do you want Al Gore saying George Bush is bad? No. I'm saying like a Don King boxing match, the, re the Republican and Democrat that the establishment put forward as the people that are going to be the winners, then people say, well, I want to vote for the winner. The people they put forward to you are like in a Don King boxing match. Why don't people watch Don King boxing matches? It took them 30 years to figure out that they were rigged. Now people finally figured it out. I mean, this is not rocket science. If Fox News and CNN and MSNBC have all been caught putting out fake polls on Ron Paul, dubbing uh, old video of Ron Paul being booed when he wins the, the uh, CPAC uh, event, uh, not telling you when he wins the straw polls in major states like New Hampshire. I mean, it's dirty trick after dirty trick after dirty trick. That tells you he's the guy. And all this fake COINTELPRO that uh, the White House regulations are Sunstein talked about. He said, we're not trusted. We've got to pose as alternative media. We've got to attack the 9-11 truthers. We've got to attack the people that don't believe in carbon taxes. And we've got to attack true constitutionalists. We'll go pose as, quote, conspiracy theorists and attack them. That's why you see that constant meme, attack Alex Jones, attack Ron Paul. The proof is in the fruit. The proof is in the actions. The proof is in Ron Paul's voting record. Have you seen it? Have No one's got one that good. Have you looked at it? In the history of the New American for decades analyzing congressional voting records, he's the only person ever with a 100 every time, 100, 100% 100 constitutional voting record, 100% known 20 years ago in Congress as Dr. No, because he votes no on all of this garbage.
All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And I said I'd go to your calls. Uh, here's the really big news. You know, in the first hour, we had Tony Gosling, uh, investigative journalist, uh, formerly with the BBC in the research department. He's a radio talk show host. Uh, he, he broke down that this could bring down the prime minister. The prime minister has been connected to a nuclear arms uh, sale to North Korea and Israel uh, that I read about many years ago. Uh, but now is back in the news. He's now run out of England and, and raced down to uh, South Africa, probably to check his Swiss bank accounts. Uh, he hired, of course, the head uh, Rupert Murdoch employee uh, who ran the news of the world to work for him. Uh, and guess what's happened, ladies and gentlemen? News of the world, phone hacking, whistleblower found dead. This is just out in the last 30 minutes. Death of Sean Hoer who was first named journalist to allege Andy Colson knew of hacking, not being treated as suspicious. Kind of like Dr. David Kelly came out and said, uh, we're being lied to about, well, he told his colleagues in emails, there are no WNDs in Iraq. We've been ordered to fix intelligence around this. I'm not going to do it. Of course, later it came out, the head of MI6 was ordered. There were meetings with Bush. It was fixed. But early on, that was the start of the war. They couldn't have that. He was found dead, and the first witnesses said five men in black uniforms ran away from the body, slit wrist, no blood there, two undigested pills, and they said he died of pills and slit in his wrist, N no blood. Folks, if someone has slit their wrist, they bleed out, there's, there's gallons of blood there. No blood. They murdered him, and, and the Hutton inquest uh, basically found that in England. So, I mean, th that's when you know something suspicious, and this... This is uh, th this is really weird. Now, now it looks like the British government, the bureaucracy, the BBC mafia, is going after Rupert Murdoch. It's not that either side's good; they're all globalists just fighting for power. And the fact that the whistleblower is dead could mean three things: the government's going to use this crisis only so far and doesn't want it to go too high, so they've gotten rid of a witness, or people connected to uh, Rupert Murdoch help this guy uh or it's real uh, you know, he, he 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 committed suicide or whatever sean Hoare, the former news of the world showbiz reporter who was first named journalist to allege that andy colson was aware of phone hacking by his staff has been found dead it'll be hard now to have that court hearing won't it the guardian has learned Hoare, uh, who was uh, working on the Sun and the News of the World with Colson before being dismissed for drink and drug problems is said to have been found dead at his Watford homes. I guess firing him and claiming he was a drunk wasn't enough to discredit him. Hertfordshire police would not confirm his identity, but the force said in a statement at 10.40 a.m. today, police were called to Langley Road, Watford, following the concerns for the welfare of a man who lives at the address on the street. Uh, upon police and ambulance arrival at the property, the body of the man was found. The man was pronounced dead at the scene shortly after. The death is currently being treated as unexplained, but not thought to be suspicious. <laughs> okay. This could bring down the prime minister, but it's not suspicious. It's like this little kid gets thrown down the stairs and dies, and then the girlfriend of the rich, you know, one of the uh, top three pharmacological companies, she's found hanging dead from the balcony, arms and legs bound, and it's not suspicious. It's not so. I mean, folks, that's what people think I'm joking about. Fammy Malik, the Arkansas medical examiner, where where they would uh, state police would be machine gunned off the road, hundreds of bullets, and they'd say the cop committed suicide. Cops investigating Clinton, or they'd grab a private investigator, cut their arms, legs off, shotgun holes in the head, gasoline on their body in a landfill, suicide. <laughs> that's even better than this one. I know you won't go look that up. You don't believe me. That's on record in the Arkansas. What about this new one I read earlier? Uh, in fact, where are my stacks? I read it in the first hour. I shouldn't be laughing about this. It's so incredibly dangerous. Where, where, where the woman is, is hanging off the front balcony, bound, naked, dead, and the police are saying, oh, this may not be foul play. Uh, we're not sure what we're going to do with this. When a little kid falls down the stairs a few days before and is now dead in the hospital. There it is. A millionaire... Six-year-old son dies in a mysterious accident at mansion where his father's lover was found hanging naked, bound. He can't make that up. Can't make that up. And, oh, well, we, you know, he's the main witness in the case. And uh, you've got the police chief, 
of Scotland Yard resigning, the head of the Metropolitan Police resigning. You got the head of News Corps uh, a division in the UK arrested over the weekend, and the main witness dies. And you know what? This, this, this nothing to see here. Move along, please, everyone. Everything is fine. The government is taking good care of you. He told the newspaper that not only did Colson, the aide to uh, the prime minister, know the phone hacking, but that he actively encouraged his staff to intercept the phone calls of celebrities in pursuit of exclusives. In a subsequent interview with the BBC, he alleged that he was personally asked by his then-editor Colson to tap into phones. In an interview with the prime minister program, uh, he said Colson's uh, insistence that he did not know about the practice was a lie. It is a simply a lie. Well, you've been handled, haven't you? At the time of Downing Street spokesman, Colson totally and utterly denied the allegations. Though now it turns out the police were reportedly bribed. Um, we're going to come back and go to your calls, and I'll get into all the other economic news, police state news, world news. Also, the Formula One racetrack in Austin that taxpayers are going to have to pay for. Um, the daughter of this guy is worth $4 billion and buys you know, $150 million houses. Well, why not? All over the world is taxpayer paid for. They get $5 million in tax breaks because the Formula One track has been ruled an environmental sanctuary with all the race car evil carbon. <laughs> it's like Al Gore's got these giant 15, 20,000 uh, square foot houses and private jets. And, but he says you need to be charged carbon taxes for your tiny apartment. I mean, these people are so sick. We'll be right back. Coming up, CIA veteran Robert Baer predicts September Israeli-Iran war. That's from Zero Hedge. Paul Watson has a more detailed report coming out any minute now at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. We'll get into that more coming up. Uh, but right now, let's go to Andrew in France, then Jordan, Nick, Chuck, Michael, and others. Andrew, you're on the air. Welcome. Hi there, Alex. Hey. Um, I've been an architect for 9-11 Truth for the past six years. I've been living in Europe for the past eight years. And I've got three points I'd like to make. The first is um, kind of a side note. I've experienced personally Codex Alimentarius. Uh, there was an herbal tea that I was buying for two years, and all of a sudden I can't get it anymore. And uh, so it's, it's the real deal. You know, they don't mess around. Oh, no, it's in the <laughs> European papers. They're banning hundreds and hundreds of over-the-counter herbal remedies, vitamins, minerals, and they put it in the Food Safety Act last year. They're trying to pass it this year, do the same thing here, and the public's like, they'll never do that. Oh, they'll never pass Obamacare. They'll never have the TSA grab our genitals. They'll never ban gardens at our houses. Yes, they will. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely true, and they can't even advise on herbal remedies anymore. They can't have it on the package. They can't personally in the stores advise you anymore. That's the first point. Second point is um, I, when the Osama bin Laden death of farce came out a couple months ago, um, I was so enraged by the French media's coverage of it uh, that I, I went on to uh, La Libération, the, their website, and, and I'm reading this ridiculous story about, about the farce. And so I, I go into the forum, I leave a comment. Uh, it was an, a day-old article. I leave a comment. Come on, guys, this is ridiculous. In French, I wrote it in French. This is ridiculous. Uh, go, go see the truth. Go to Infowars.com. Uh, within 10 minutes, I had someone attacking me. And these comments are, no one, no one attacks people in the, in the forum. You know, it's like somebody reads an article, and then they write their comment, and they let it go. So someone attacked me personally. So I respond. I say, okay, uh, you know, you can attack me all you want, but why don't you attack the ideas? Go to the site. Why don't you let people decide for themselves? Go to the site and check it out. Within another two minutes, someone was already, a different person, in theory, was already attacking me. Uh, and, and so it just it made me think, and it made me think about how Infowars could maybe need to formally bring the war to non-Anglo Europe, because obviously uh, uh, in England it's pretty well known, but maybe in France and Spain and Italy. Uh, no, Infowars it's very well, well it's very well known there. I mean, I've had family before in Europe, and they find out that. Um, you know that uh, I mean they'll mention you like Alex Jones, and then when they you know hear that that they're uh, I've talked to other people in in business who go over there, and they just mention Alex Jones. Suddenly you know they've got a driver for the whole day, wants to drive him around for free. There are a lot of people that are awake over there, but at the same time, sir, it came out in the news today that the Pentagon is manipulating social networks worldwide. They have very sophisticated bots that can simulate humans. 
countering information. They do it with ridicule. There is a full spectrum attack on the Internet right now uh, against alternative news and information. So I think that's what you probably are seeing, Andrew.